Today I'm going to show you how you can use the Arduino Opla IoT kit to make your own weather station. This weather station posts data to the cloud, which you can view on a dashboard on your computer, phone or tablet from anywhere in the world. Towards the end of last year, Arduino launched their Opla IoT kit. I did an unboxing and first impressions video which I'll add a link to. I played around with programming the Arduino locally and using it to fetch information from the internet, but I didn't get into trying the Arduino IoT cloud. So today we're going to use the kit to build a weather station, which we can view from the IoT cloud. This project is primarily based on the personal weather station project, which is included in the kit, but we'll also be making some improvements and enhancements to get a bit more out of it. For this project, we're going to be using the IoT carrier board, the Arduino Maker 1010 board, the plastic case, power cable, USB cable, and then the screws. The Arduino Maker 1010 board is the brains behind this project. It plugs into the carrier board, takes readings from the sensors, and then posts these to the cloud using the Wi-Fi connection. To get started, we'll follow the project guide on the Opla site. As you can see, there are 8 included projects. We're going to be running through the personal weather station project. We're going to be using the temperature and humidity sensor, the pressure sensor and then the light sensor on our carrier board. To start off, we need to set the board up as an IoT cloud device. To do this, we need to plug it into our computer and install the Arduino Create Agent. This is a small plugin which allows the web interface to talk to the board. We then go across to Devices on the IoT Cloud page and set up the Arduino device. This process uploads a generic sketch to the device which enables it to connect to the IoT Cloud and can be seen as an IoT device. Once we have our device set up, we can start creating our first thing, which will be our weather station. When you first create a thing, you'll need to assign a device to it, which will be our Maker 1010 board. We then need to create variables for all of our metrics which we'd like to control over the cloud. This doesn't need to be all of the variables you're going to use in your sketch, but just the ones you want to be able to view or control over the cloud. For our weather station, this is going to be the temperature, pressure, humidity, light and then a weather report string. For each variable, you'll need to tell the system how often it should be updated and whether the cloud can just read the variable or read and write to the variable. Once all of your variables are created, the last thing you need to do is put in your Wi-Fi network name and password so that the board is able to connect to it. In the same area, you're able to edit the sketch and view the serial monitor, but we're going to rather do this in the full online editor where we have a bit more space. Before we leave, we just need to rename the thing so that our sketch is named appropriately. We've now got the web editor open, and you'll see a basic sketch which looks similar to a typical Arduino sketch. The main difference is that the cloud connection code has been added to the setup function, and the variables that we created earlier are already available to use. We're going to remove the main portion of the code and replace it with the personal weather station example code as a starting point. Let's have a quick look at what the code does. In the setup function, we start the serial monitor for debugging information and then establish a connection with the cloud. We then create an object to control the carrier board. You'll notice that there's a line called carrier case which is set to false. This sets different calibration set points for the capacitive buttons so that they're able to be activated through the case when the carrier is in it. We'll be using it out of the case for now. In the loop function, we update the cloud variables, then get readings for the state of the buttons, as well as readings from all of our sensors. We then check if any of the buttons have been pushed, and if they have, we update the display accordingly. Lastly, we have some weather condition checks, which generate a single line weather report if they are met. Let's try upload the sketch to our board and see how it works. When the board is mounted onto the carrier, it makes some ticking noises when the sketch is uploaded, as the two relays are energized and de-energized. Once the code is uploaded, we need to open the serial monitor to allow the board to run, as there was a pause for this in the setup function. We can then see that the board connects to the Wi-Fi and then establishes a connection with the cloud. Let's see what's displayed on the carrier. We saw from the code that we needed to touch one of the first four buttons to get the display to work. 
The first button is the temperature, then humidity, then light, and finally the pressure. The fifth button doesn't do anything yet. Now that we know that the board is connected to the cloud and should be posting data, we can create a dashboard to view the data over the internet. In the dashboard creator, we can create and arrange a number of displays, charts and buttons to view and interact with our Arduino. We're going to start by adding a readout for each of our variables. Instead of just being able to see the current values of the variables, it would be nice to be able to see the historic data as well. So we're going to add a chart for each variable too. Adding a chart allows you to see the data for the past hour, day, 7 days and 15 days, all plotted onto a line graph. Once we're done creating the dashboard, we click on Use Dashboard to save the layout and start using it. The data will continue to be logged on the cloud and you can access this dashboard through your browser from any computer. There's also a mobile app which you can load onto your phone or tablet to view your created dashboards. You can try to play around with the sensors on your Arduino to see them respond on the cloud by covering up the light sensor. One limitation of the included sketch is that the data on the display is only updated when the button is pushed. So if you leave it displaying the temperature, it doesn't update the display until you press the temperature button again. The general layout and colours are also a bit boring, so we're going to change those too. In my version of the code, I've added some splash green text which is displayed on Starter. I then also modified the code so that each button selects a display mode and the display is then updated in the background without having to press the button again. I also added some color and changed the font size for each of the displays. So let's upload my code and see how it looks. The displays now look a bit more vibrant and they continue to be refreshed in the background. I also added some functionality to the last button which now blacks out the display. This could be useful at night to make it less distracting and may use less power when powered by a battery. You can now watch the display and the app update simultaneously. The last thing I'm going to try is putting the weather station into the case and powering it using an 18650 lithium ion battery. For that we need to add this little power lead between the board and the Arduino. We can then screw the carrier into the case to hold it up against the faceplate. Now let's add the battery to power it on and close the back cover. One thing I would have liked to have on the carrier is a power switch. As soon as you put the battery into the carrier then the Arduino turns on and you can't turn it off again without removing the back cover and removing the battery. We can now change the display by pressing on the cover above the buttons. The buttons work really well without the case but are a little bit too sensitive when inside the case. It's really easy to activate them by mistake when you're handling the case or even hovering a finger near another button. That's it for our weather station, we now have a standalone device which is connected to our Wi-Fi network and is continuously posting data to the cloud, which we're able to access on a computer or mobile device. Next I'd like to try adding a rain sensor and an anemometer or wind direction indicator to the station, using one of the analog inputs. Thanks for watching, please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.